In our first video, we hinted at one of the most interesting things about Bitcoin. It's potential to be a new kind of money, one that is more fair and open than the money we have today. That sounds good and all, but it might not mean very much to you. So in this video, I want to dig deeper and explore how a better money can help empower people all around the world. It all comes down to one word, freedom. But freedom is a tricky word. For those of us that live in a place in the world with healthy freedoms, we hardly think about it. Only when we don't have freedom is it something that really hits home. So it can be hard for us to imagine what it must be like to have our economic freedom trampled upon. So let's try to make that more real by imagining ourselves in the shoes of others. Imagine you work abroad, away from your family to support them from afar. Every two weeks, you send money back. Then imagine your home country has a broken financial system or imposes huge fees on those transfers. Currently, about 500 billion in these kinds of transfers happen every year, most to the developing world. How much is being taken along the way by unnecessary middlemen? Now, imagine you're retired. You're unlucky enough to live under a government that has gone haywire. Your currency is being rapidly devalued and high inflation rates mean the hard-earned savings you worked for decades to build has become worthless. This isn't theoretical. It's happened throughout history. And even today, inflation in Argentina is running at about 40% per year, making saving money infeasible. Shouldn't the ability to save for the future be a basic human right? Next, imagine you're an activist fighting for an important but politically unpopular cause. You're in the middle of fundraising when the banking system closes access to your accounts. This is happening right now in Hong Kong, in Russia. It happened to WikiLeaks. It will happen again. Without money, how can activists create change? Finally, imagine you live in a country under tough circumstances. You have worked for years to save enough to take your family to a place with more freedom and opportunity. Then imagine if the laws of the land prevented you from taking your savings with you and you were forced to leave it all behind. For tens of millions of refugees, this is their reality. There are countless other scenarios to imagine. People with no credit history who can't open bank accounts. People who live in places that are disconnected from the global banking system. People who want to buy things that have become needlessly politicized. People who are discriminated against constantly based on their gender or ethnicity or beliefs or for any other reason. For some of us, money can feel empowering, like a tool for freedom. But for most of the world, money is used as a tool for oppression. And if it's still somehow hard to imagine, consider the scale. The Human Rights Foundation estimates that 4.2 billion people currently live under governments that are considered authoritarian regimes. That's most of the planet. And this is where Bitcoin can help. Bitcoin can help restore economic freedom in the world. Just like the internet has given us complete freedom to communicate with anyone, anywhere, instantly, Bitcoin gives us the freedom to transact directly with anyone, anywhere, in a way that can't be blocked. Resisting financial censorship is one of Bitcoin's key breakthroughs. It's another one of its superpowers, really. And it's made possible by the fact that the network is decentralized and no one controls it. Bitcoin doesn't require banks, credit card companies, or any other third parties. It doesn't even require your name, phone number, or home address, nor does it care about your credit history. Anyone can now directly receive or send Bitcoin to anyone else, anywhere, anytime. You don't need a bank account or to visit a foreign exchange shop or to send checks around in the mail. In order to use Bitcoin as money, all you need is an internet connection. And so suddenly we've become economically connected to literally billions more people. Isn't that kind of mind blowing? Oh, and Bitcoin has one more superpower that for some of you will be the most important. Once you have some and hold on to it safely, it becomes unseizable, meaning no one can take it away from you without your permission. Kind of like having your savings in a super secure home safe, protected with a strong private password. Taking control of your Bitcoin like this gives you the ultimate freedom to do whatever you want with your money. Save it, 
store it, spend it, or take it with you wherever you go. To sum up, Bitcoin protects against runaway inflation, as we discussed in our first video, but it also gives us the freedom to transact without possibility of censorship, connects billions more people to a common global financial system, cannot be seized, putting power in the hands of individuals. Even in the cosy Western world, where our freedoms seem so solid, it's important to remember, freedoms are actually quite fragile. You might have heard the news stories recently about how the stock trading app Robinhood started blocking regular investors from buying certain stocks for a few days. And yes, being denied the ability to buy a stock might sound silly, especially compared against the life or death examples we talked about earlier. But for me, it hit home how little control we have over what is possible or not possible when we transact digitally. And ultimately, that is why Bitcoin is designed the way it is. It reduces our need to trust the elements of the financial system that have let us down, that keep people down. Bitcoin then can be a solution for the migrant worker who can now send money home worry-free at effectively no cost. For the retiree whose savings are now safe from runaway inflation. For the activist group who can now fundraise and fight for their cause. For the refugee who can more easily pack up and leave to make a better life. I view it as our responsibility to preserve the freedoms we have and to do what we can to help those who are not as lucky to strive to be more free. And I see Bitcoin as being a big way in which we can help to do that, which is why I love talking about it and helping build it out. But that's all for now. See you next time.